this is a great idea. Uh, a, a bunch of the alumni from 1972 from Team Canada are getting together for, uh, well, they're a series of lectures. It's going to be called the 72 Summit Series Tour, uh, September 2nd in Montreal, September 6th in Winnipeg, September 8th at the Queen Elizabeth Theatre in Vancouver, September 10th right here at the Sony Centre for the Performing Arts. And the idea behind it is to take members of this Team Canada alumni group, have them go across the country, and, and this is what I love about it. It's multi-pronged. It's going to make people like me who remember this series happy to talk to these guys and to hear these guys talk. It's hopefully going to educate an entirely new generation of hockey fans. And the fact that we're talking about this now on the eve of the World Cup of Hockey makes it only better. We're very pleased at this time to be joined in studio by uh, people who really don't need any introduction, Ken Dryden and uh, Pat Stapleton. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. First thing I got to ask you, Pat, is the puck, because I've been doing some reading about the puck. I'll, I'll ask you, do you have the puck from Paul Henderson's I, I goal? I can't guarantee it's <laughs> Paul Henderson's goal, Jeff. Okay. But I picked the puck. I had it on my stick with seven or eight seconds left, and I sort of circled behind Ken. Okay. And uh, it come to a dr uh, close, and I just bent down and picked it up, put it in my glove. So that's and, it. And if you believe that. <laughs> <laughs> we, we have some land in Florida. We'll yeah, yeah I, I was, I was going to say. Well, I would imagine that it, uh, you know, I, I we talked a little bit about this Thank off you. the air. Um, and I want to talk about the idea behind this. But I, I want to talk a little bit about uh, when you guys got back to Canada. And I'm sure you were aware of how important that win was and how just how important that series was but Ken when you got back to Canada were you were you prepared for just how how much it had become a part of Canadian history I mean we see this anytime anybody puts together vignettes of Canadian history this series is always referenced did you were you aware of that when you came back or did you think hey you know it was it, we won it was a tough series we're going to start uh, playing NHL hockey now, and people are going to forget about it. Well, it was it was certainly sort of somewhere in between, but but no, I mean we didn't even really realize the impact in Canada at the time because we were in Moscow, right? And and I mean it's before you know, fa you know the, the the FaceTiming and 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 any kind of instant communication. What we had were telegrams. You know, mm -hmm. that, that we would get telegrams and put them up on the wall. And so we were, we, I mean, we knew that there's a lot of interest. But we had no idea how kind of just absorbing um, that it really was. So that's what we arrived back to. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, as you're saying, then, then it's all the transformations that happen out of all of that. I mean, it just, it becomes part of the conversation. It becomes a reference point. Through the 70s, it's, touring soviet teams when is there going to be another series in canada cup of 70s but it it be it becomes that reference point but then it also is something you know that that really mm -hmm. changed the way we think about hockey and ultimately how we have come to play hockey how did the idea for this tour come about pat and 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 the, just tell us a little bit about the thinking behind it uh we met as a group what would Starting in about 11, uh, September of 2011, mm -hmm. we were at a golf group and we thought that what we were doing was not sustainable. Mm -hmm. So I accidentally put up my hand and said, you think we could go to a business school and get a case study done and see see if this thing's got sustainability? Um, Dennis Hall come running over. He's a, a Brock alumni. I said, let's go to Brock. And Red Berenson wanted us to go to Michigan. Mm -hmm. because uh, two of the professors were Canadian. So I said, well, we're Canadian, let's go to Brock, and ended up, the first introduction was to a Dr. Barry Wright, who's now an associate dean, I think it is, or associate press professor and dean of the Goodman School of Business. And he started to put together a case study, and he's published it. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we formed a corporation about giving back because we've been so honored as a group. We were trying to figure out how do we give back? So out of that whole exercise, we met in St. Catharines, February or um, October 2nd of uh, 2014, 
and had a, a group of guys there. There was 17 or 18 of us showed up, mm -hmm. and we voted in a board of directors. And then Serge Savard talked to a gentleman, Pierre Marchand, in Montreal who puts on concerts. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, said, let's do go back 44 years later, which is coming up, and and uh, do the same thing. And Ken will I mean, tell the, you at the show. Yeah, I mean, the thing, the thing, like, I've been to a few Team Canada events, and, um, and, and you know, after a number of years, you hear the same stories. Right. And they're kind of, they, they may be captivating to those who haven't heard them before, but they start to get a little tired, and this, that, it wasn't until that event that Pat described in St. Catharines that I started to realize that, in fact, it actually doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. But the way in which it can work differently is, one, it's not just one or two people up there because then they just tell their stories. We had a number of players, and what we did was to do it in a chronological way so you start with, you know, training camp and what is... And so you, you kind of interrupt where the stories usually begin and say, well, no, let's get back to the moments. Let's mm -hmm. get back to the details. And all of a sudden in these details, fresh stuff starts to come up and stuff that I had never heard before or experienced before. And then you start to react to that and you say something that somebody else wasn't aware of. And then it becomes fresh for us and then the best of us comes out, and then you know, mm -hmm. th then the rest happens. And Pat, you know, even this morning, he was telling two stories. One of them that came out of that night, um, but but also another one that apparently at the end of the of the first game in Montreal, seven to three, disaster. I'm the goalie. Horrible night. We're completely shocked. Then getting on the bus to go to the airport to fly to Toronto ahead of the second game. I get on the bus. Pat happens to be sitting over by a window. There's an open seat. Um, I, you know, sit down at it, and I just say to Pat, as Pat remembers, and I didn't, I'm just saying, what happened? He just and, turned to me and yeah. said, what happened? Mm -hmm. And then Pat then, starts into yeah. all of this stuff of, like, well, geez, and, and all of the things about, we don't know. Mm -hmm. Like, we're trying to figure all of that out. And then he tells this great story about Roger Bear. <laughs> and Jean Rattel yeah. in St. Catharines. And somehow it comes out where either, you know, Rod, I guess it was Rod saying, you know, like we were out there that one you know, night and on that shift, I come back to the bench and I say to, to Ratty, as you yeah. call him, mm -hmm. he said, I didn't touch the puck. Did you touch the puck? <laughs> said, I didn't touch the puck. Well, all yeah. of a sudden, here you've got these guys who have dominated the play ever mm -hmm. since they were eight years old. Every time they were on the ice, they were the ones who had the puck. Every shift, year after year, game after game, level after level, all of a sudden they're in this game, and they realize they didn't touch the puck, and they have n now they've got to try to figure out what the heck to do. Mm -hmm. I mean, so that the next shift they actually start touching the puck, <laughs> and they don't know how to play without touching the puck. Right. But it, it's those kinds of things that that are really revealing that I don't think any of the rest of us knew, and that you know that can come out in a format like this. Well, and, and the thing that I find interesting, because I've heard a lot of the, the stories as well, and a lot of them are, are funny stories, and a lot of them are, you know, there's there's a serious bent to them as well. But I think the way sports has gone now, I think, and I, I don't mean this as an insult to sports fans from previous generation. Well, hell, I'm a sports fan from a previous generation, <laughs> so if I want to insult myself, I guess I can. I think there's more of an appetite for detail now among sports fans. You know, I, mm -hmm. I, I think there's more of an appetite for it. That story's a great story. You know, the hockey fan's going to go, well, well, of course they wouldn't touch the puck because the Russians were so mm -hmm. possession-oriented. Yeah. And that's why I think this is such a... It, it may be able to catch on with the younger generation because people... I think a lot of young hockey fans, now they tend to think of puck possession and they've mm -hmm. seen so many European players and they've seen so many, uh, you know, European teams that they might even be able to relate a little more. To what you guys are talking about. Well, it's pretty about. intimate now so. with the fans because they're involved with the social media. Right. You know, before they read the paper or watched the replays on TV, and that was it, right? Mm -hmm. Now now they're really involved in the action. Mm -hmm. uh, they, they feel like they're inside. Mm -hmm. And I, I think, uh, I mean, at that, there was 400 or 500 people at the show. They didn't want to leave. Mm -hmm. we, we were supposed to be up there for an hour, 
and it ended up being two and a half hours sitting telling stories. Well, it was, and it only ended because yeah. Bill sort of said, look, I got to go to the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> and so, it, you know, it, it finally right. ended. <laughs> Do, um, have you been surprised, Ken and Pat, at just how strong the bonds have remained from that 1972 team? You know, like when you guys were playing together in 72, and I understand you can't ask someone to think ahead 40 years, but are you surprised at how strong the bonds still are? Because you guys were, you guys played against each other. Well, you guys uh, weren't that, exactly friends when no, you were in the no, ice. No, no, that's the thing, Jeff. I mean, we come together for that time, and then we separated and started playing against one mm -hmm. another again. So there but was. Did you have that feeling that, ah, oh, this is the guy that was in goal uh, against the Russians? Uh, not really. I mean,. <laughs> Yeah, it, you were back battling for prose uh, possession of the Stanley Cup, right? Mm -hmm. So you were into the regular season. We went right into the regular season. The one thing I found uh, it was it slowed down. Mm -hmm. the, the NHL had slowed down. That tempo in that series was uh, unbelievable. They were just that fast mm -hmm. and that quick and that puck possession. I mean, we were mesmerized right off the hop. And and I think I think what happened, and as Pat was saying, you know that, you know that you have this kind of intense experience, but then it ends, and and it's not that you don't, or that you stop feeling it, but you're off doing other things. Mm -hmm. I think in part that bond, you know, has 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 remained, because I think all of these years afterwards, um, and you know, Pat was on terrific teams in in Chicago in particular. Mm -hmm. You know, I was on really good teams in Montreal. Most of the, you know, other players were on good teams. They won Stanley Cups. Um, and, and you get to, and, and you can't fight with the feelings that you've got. I mean, mm -hmm. uh, whoever, you know, who knows what you're going to feel? Well, you end up feeling it. I would love to be able to say that every Stanley Cup we won felt like the same. It was, they don't. Some were really terrific and others you hardly remember. Mm -hmm. I'd love to be able to say that some of the Stanley Cups felt the same as the 72 series. None of them did. Mm -hmm. The 72 series, I think, virtually for every player on the team, no matter what else they did in the NHL, is their favorite hockey memory. Right. And so if it's your favorite hockey memory, you feel an incredible sense of connection with and gratitude towards all of those people around you that helped to create that memory. 